organized. A man arranged in a systematic way, especially on a large scale. Hard work. A man tending to work with energy and commitment. Resolute. A man admirably purposeful, determined, and unwavering. Colonial America had many injustices, so America had to fight back. On April 19, 1775, a war began, but we'll come back to that later. For our story starts with a poor merchant that worked his way up. This man, although seemingly lost to history, helped the revolution in unimaginable amount. He was brave enough to take up the cause and was a savior to soldiers. But most of all, he was Connecticut's first governor. His name was Jonathan Trumbull. Did he really commit treason? Trumbull was America's first elected governor, and he lived to serve the people. He was a Harvard-educated man, very smart and organized. With an intellect like his, he thought it would be a disservice to the people not to be a politician. Before the war, Jonathan Trumbull was a part of Connecticut's Council of Safety. This group solved Connecticut's problems the best they could. At first, they met twice a year, but during the Revolutionary War, this group had to meet every week to solve CT's problems on a regular basis. The council met in Trumbull's war office and had 47 members that all participated in solving the issues. Jonathan Trumbull was dedicated to the church and did most of his actions for them. Even though you shouldn't mix religion and politics, it was very common then. This belief motivated him in his decisions. Jonathan Trumbull, from an outside viewer, would be seen as a rich, God-loving politician. In his will, he wrote, Principally and first of all, I bequeath my soul to God the Creator and giver thereof and body to the earth, nothing doubting but that I shall receive the same again at the general resurrection through the power of Almighty God, believing and hoping for eternal life through the merits of my dear, exalted Redeemer Jesus Christ. One thing was wrong with the rich politician picture. He was broke. For such an influential person in the American Revolution, it was a surprise to hear that this great man was poor. Trumbull started his life out as a merchant, but not a clever one of that. He lent his customers and credit, and most didn't pay him back, causing him to lose the money. He spent his life fighting off debt until Trumbull died insolvent. This entitlement was kept secret from the people of Connecticut. Jonathan Trumbull was a man of many mysteries. He kept his entitlement from Connecticut by hiding behind a house of expensive materials. And he kept his traitorous beliefs against the British away from England. For Trumbull, like a lot of the colonials, was fed up with the intolerable acts King George III imposed on the colonies. The intolerable acts were a series of taxes the king put on citizens. They were unfair and they violated Connecticut's rights. Along with other instances, Jonathan got fed up with England. So he decided to side with America. But did he commit treason by leaving his parent country? Although... As America's first elected governor, Jonathan Trumbull's greatest triumphs were in the war. During the war, Jonathan Trumbull sent supplies to the Continental Army. A wide misconception about Jonathan Trumbull was that he was friends with George Washington. The truth is, he and Washington had a work relationship. Whenever Washington needed supplies for his troops, Washington could count on Trumbull being at his aid. Some historians speculate the war couldn't have been won without him. When Trumbull died penniless, uh, his legacy continued. Generals, new governors, and George Washington himself all sent letters to his sons, thanking them for their father's service. Although this man was great, he, like many Americans, owned slaves. He had four slaves, two women and two men. His youngest slave, Grace, was only 14 years old and one of the slave's daughters. Another slave was freed in 1753, and there is speculation that he owned another child. However, unlike that of Thomas Jefferson, the slaves 
do not taint his reputation as much, because he treated his slaves nicely. To this day, you can see Trumbull's name on street signs in towns. However, his memory has faded, but definitely has not been forgotten. He had two daughters who both went to academy, two sons who went to university, two sons who died, and a wife who also passed. One of his sons, grandson, and great-grandson all continued his legacy as governor, but none surpassing him at the best. His other son, John Trumbull, was a painter and called the Painter of the American Revolution. He painted Declaration of Independence, Surrender of General Burgoyne, Surrender of Lauren Cornwallis, and General George Washington resigning his commission to Congress. People will always have Trumbull deep in their roots, but he himself they will not know. Jonathan's hometown recently celebrated his 300th birthday. <laughs> Now the first he was a miller, second he was a wheel, third he was a little tailor, three jolly rolls together, jolly rolls together, jolly rolls together.